Variable text in Lightburn is a powerful tool that can greatly expedite your workflow, especially for batch production jobs that require unique text output for each unit produced. With a dynamic text mode enabled, Lightburn automatically replaces special formatting codes used as placeholders with text when a project is sent to the laser. These placeholders can be swapped for date and time, serial numbers, cut settings, and even data from a CSV file. In this video, we'll cover how to enable variable text, go over the different setting options, and use it to batch out custom table place cards. Variable text works hand in hand with the standard text tool. Clicking on the A icon in the left toolbar to activate the text tool, and we'll click in the workspace and type example. We can customize our text using the text properties section of the top toolbar. On the far right above the offset box is a dropdown that lets us choose a dynamic text mode. By default, this is set to normal, which is what you want for any text in a project that won't be changing. Through this dropdown, we can also choose date time, merge CSV, serial number, or cut settings to change the text type. Selecting one of these other modes lets Lightburn know you want to display an alternative value for this text. After defining the dynamic text mode, next we need to replace our word with one or more expressions. These expressions can be found in our variable text formats documentation linked in the description below. They tell Lightburn the exact value and format to use when replacing your text. Each mode has its expressions listed showing what to include in your text and what the output will be. As an example, I'll set my mode to date and time. Then I'll replace my text with four lowercase d's, which is the expression that tells Lightburn to output the long localized day name. By clicking on preview, we can see that this text automatically changes to the day of the week written out. These expressions can also be combined. If we want to output the day, month, and year, typing the values on screen lets us group these expressions together. In preview, we can see the output which will automatically display the current date and year. If you have a project that requires the current date, using this formatting will let you set it once and know it will update in the future when you rerun the job. A single block of text can only use expressions from one mode, but different text blocks in the same project can be set to another mode and use its expressions. In addition to setting expressions, there is a variable text window that gives you further control. Head up to the window drop-down menu in the top toolbar and select variable text to open a tabbed variable text window on the right side of your workspace. Clicking and holding down the test button will show what the workspace expressions will output as without having to open the preview window. Bake will convert any variable text into normal text objects, permanently replacing the expressions in your workspace with what their current output would be. The rest of the options in the variable text window are used with serial numbers or a CSV file. Let's go through an example now using a CSV file that we will import into Lightburn. This is a spreadsheet I put together using Google Sheets, but any software that can export in .csv file format will work fine. This is a list of names and table numbers for a wedding that we're going to have auto-populate into our design. The first step is to download the spreadsheet as a .csv file. Then in Lightburn, select Browse in the Variable Text window to open a File Explorer window where we need to navigate to the downloaded CSV file. Then select it and click Open. We can see under the CSV file that the spreadsheet has successfully loaded. I created a simple table card for each guest that includes their table number, but I haven't entered any expressions yet. We want the table number to display in the upper right corner. Using the text tool, I will type table and change the dynamic text mode to merge CSV. Now we will reference the Lightburn variable text formatting documentation. Under the section on CSV files, we can see that a percentage sign followed by a number is used to select the column from which we want to display data. Looking at our spreadsheet, we see that table numbers are in column B, which is our second column. However, for variable text formatting, column numbers actually start at zero, meaning our list of names is in column zero and our table numbers are in column one. I'll add a space after table and enter percent one to display the table number. Holding down test, we can see our expression change to table number. This is the correct column, but we don't want our titles to be included. In the variable text window, if we increase current from zero, we can cycle through each row. With the value of one, it skips the first title row, so we'll set that as our start row. There are a total of 30 guests that go through row 31, but rows also start with a count of zero. So we'll set the final row as 30 to cover all guests. The last thing to add to our design is the guest name. Using the text tool, we'll add percent zero to the center so that it will grab the names from the first column. 
We also need to set the dynamic text mode to merge CSV. Now when we click test, both the table number and guest name update in our design. Text objects in Lightburn have a property called offset. This value is set to zero by default, but adjusting it allows us to look up text in different rows of a CSV file. So we can have multiple text objects in our design that share the same formatting, but refer to different CSV entries. The entry referred to will be the current value from the variable text window, plus whatever offset value we've entered. With current at zero, if we change the offset of percent one from zero to one and hold down test, it now displays one, since it's grabbing text from the second row. We can use the grid array tool to automatically apply offsets to an array of duplicates and really unlock the power of variable text. Start by selecting the entire design and clicking on group selection in the top toolbar to group our design elements together. Then click on the array button in the left toolbar to open the create grid array window. Here we can set how many of our designs we want to run at the same time. I went with three columns and three rows with a spacing of five millimeters between each. The number you can run at the same time will be limited by your material size and machine workspace. My material is exactly 300 by 300 millimeters, and I can see in this window the total width and height is within these bounds. Making sure auto increment variable text is enabled, we'll click OK to confirm the selection and create the additional copies. Now, if we hold down test, all nine cards update with the correct names and table numbers from our spreadsheet. After confirming speed and power settings, I'm ready to send this job off to the laser. Once it completes, we can have the next run auto-populate with the next nine entries in our spreadsheet. To do this, set advance by to the total number of objects you are running at a time. In this example, we have nine cards per job. Then click next and hold down the test button. All of the cards have now advanced to the next nine values in our spreadsheet. You can manually advance forward and backward by clicking the next or previous buttons. If you check auto advance, once a job runs, it will automatically advance without needing to press next. On our fourth batch, we won't have enough rows in our spreadsheet to populate all the designs, so the additional expressions will be blank. We'll want to delete the extra designs before running the final job to prevent any wasted material. After running the final job, we have 30 unique table cards that only required one design. You can quickly see how variable text can be a massive time saver when you're running batch jobs or have a design that requires regular customization. Now you know how variable text works and how to use it to expedite your workflow. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos on Mastering Lightburn.